I guess I started thinking about Atto about around the year 2000. This is a scientific project with huge impact worldwide for science, uh, but also for conservation. For me and some uh, colleagues of, uh, of the field of boundary layer research, we have this, we can say this dream for more than two decades. The German proposal met uh, <laughs> here. <laughs> Obviously, this is sort of the dream of, well, like, maybe not quite a lifetime, but uh, the dream of, uh, of a decade or, or almost two coming true. ATO stands for Amazon Tall Tower Observatory, and it's uh, focused on a 325 meter tall tower, which we put here in the middle of the Amazon. Basically, the higher you go up, the broader the area, you get your influence in the air. And that is very important for us here. One of the main driving objectives behind the ATO research is to understand the global carbon cycle. So what we're under trying to understand here is what is the role of the biosphere in regulating the atmospheric carbon cycle. Does the Amazon forest right now act, for instance, as a sink that takes up carbon from the atmosphere? Or is it maybe a source of carbon that goes into the atmosphere? This is a collaborative project between Germany and Brazil, uh, with actually Brazil in a leading role, and the institutions that are involved are the National Amazon Research Institute, called INPA, and uh, the German Partner Institute is our institute, the Max Planck Institute for Chemistry and Mines. In the beginning, all the budget to, to, to build this tower would be uh, German funds, but we were able to get Brazilian funds and uh, share 50%, 50%. The Brazilian institution, INPA, is strongly focused on research on the carbon cycle and uh, on meteorology and micrometeorology, whereas uh, our institution has an emphasis on aerosol chemistry and aerosol microphysics, as well as also on greenhouse gas composition and greenhouse gas concentrations in the atmosphere. And at the end of 2010, we started the first measurements here of trace gases which have ever taken place in this deep forest site, and that was great. And then, with the time in 2011, 2012, we have built up these first containers. We have started um, to measure with this trace gas profile. We had the first intensive operation campaign in the beginning of 2012, when also the aerosol measurements started to um, increase and grew up. to understand how aerosol particles act as uh, a source for cloud droplets and therefore also for, for rain. And we also would like to understand the exchange between the biosphere here and the atmosphere above. So we can understand better how the forest works in the relationship with the atmosphere. What is the gas exchange? What is the aerosol exchange? What is, what is happening during the day, during the night? How is the forest coupled with the atmosphere? what is going in the wetter season, in the drier season.
there was a team of about 15 people um, putting together the tower and over the course of five or six months after the, the foundation was built, uh, basically it just kind of went together in a structure that the outer structure of the tower was, was built up and it was more than 100 meters tall before they started putting in stairs. are very proud that this big tower, this big building is, uh, I, I guess, the biggest one in, in South America or Latin America. It's there in the middle of the rainforest and it's somehow surreal to see, uh, to see this happen in the middle of the forest. The camp is amazing right now if we have four bathrooms, where we have two well-established stone-made houses, where we can relax, where we can work. I think that the infrastructure of the tower helps a lot to the people who want to do research. We find a support of support, a capacitated, a good environment to work. The data which are generated at the other side, which we are measuring, are directly uh, transmitted uh, to the labs and stored here. Before we had really campaigns which went there every week to uh, make the download of the data and make a copy here in Manaus and send, send it to Germany. Spears or something like that that make it really, really crunchy. Yeah. Yeah. It wasn't getting power. Okay, that might explain it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, so we do long time measurements, and the Atul project is planned to stay at least 20, 30 years. So we are expecting to get a broad database, and over the years we can make good statistics, we can get a deeper impression. Also, what is climate change doing with the forest? How is it reacting? And how is the system working? And then we are here in an area of sustainable development. That means it is controlled by official institutions. And let's say for the next 10 years, we do not expect any big change in the conditions of the pristine area. The first steps are to equip the tower with uh, the necessary instruments. The Atto Tower will be the bigger installation ever. It will be a very exciting and work field actually challenge. On the tall tower we will install some basic instruments on the top of the tower using both inlet lines and instruments standing on top because we want to uh, extend our existing time series. So we will do sizing and also looking at the optical and chemical properties of the aerosol particles. For me it's very interesting to see what is happening above 80 meters. Regarding the ozone question, I see at night sometimes an increase of ozone. And I cannot definitely see where's the source of ozone. Is it in one kilometer site? Is it maybe only in 150 meter site? The measurements in Atto are hopefully going to help us answer actually what the role of long-range transport of atmospheric pollutants is in this region and in the world at large, how fast particles and pollution are produced, how fast they're removed from the atmosphere, and how far this pollution can reach across the globe. I, I expect and hope that Atto will enhance our understanding for global climate system, for regional weather systems also. It's always been a huge challenge, but uh, what we're seeing now is that it's all coming together and hopefully when we have all the instrumentation installed at the tall tower, we'll get this uh, great data quality over many, many years from the Atto Tall Tower. Cheers. Cheers.
here. It's using different way to get paint. Wow, okay. <laughs> Here, huh? Yes. Only when you get to the platform at the end of each uh -huh. at the end of each flight, rehook transfer to the other yeah. side. Mm -hmm. uh, not before or after, because certainly the stairs can be slippery, right. especially underneath the canopy. Oh, not on top of the tower. It's just a total rush from all the adrenaline and the excitement of coming up here. Today, I'm really impressed about this quick formation of the clouds. The sky is almost fully clouded, and we have the first precipitation events here. And that went more quickly than I, than I expected today, actually. I think the work at Ato site, I think the work here at INPA, uh, it's a perfect job to me because I could combine all the things I love, like the forest, the nature, and technology. Where in the world I could do that? All of these instruments humming away and you open the other side of the door and it's just jungle. Like, this whole contrast was really interesting to me and uh, I, I was excited to be in this new environment and take part in the larger goals here, even, even if I'm just working on the technical aspects and just trying to make sure everything is running. I feel lucky to be part of it. And it's a very big challenge because we need to be always giving the answers to the researchers in the quickest possible time. You are able to, to include in the project, the scientific interests of Brazil. Yeah, I'm very happy. I like to work here because I'm one of the founders here too. When we started, I was the first one to be here too. Until now, I'm together with them. Since the time of the Ramal, the first tower, the second tower, now the third tower, all the time here. Oh, for me it's great because I know that Somehow we will prove that the Amazon rainforest is important for, for the world climate and that on the other side uh, the climate changes are affecting the forest. When I went up the tower the first time in the very early morning, more or less at sunrise time, and I came at the level above the canopy 40, 45 meters, and I've seen these banks of, uh, of fog.